the general physical examination, cardiovascular, respiratory, GIT, and at the end we will do the neurology session. Now I am starting with a general physical examination. Whenever you go to the patient, it is always preferable that you should introduce yourself, ask patient name, and then take his consent and warm your hands and note his general behavior. My name is Dr. Sajidhan. Your name is Usman. I am a medical student and I want to say that you are very difficult to do. I will start with the general physical examination. The general physical examination First, you will check the vital signs which include pulse, temperature, respiratory rate and blood pressure. Pulse, respiratory rate, temperature and blood pressure. So, before you start, you can place the thermometer in his Axilla. So you can save some time and then start with the examination of pulse. Keep the arm in a semi prone position and then flex wrist a little bit and with the left arm you should feel with three fingers the pulse, the radial pulse should have a watch here on your left hand and you can count the rate, rhythm and you can feel the volume. You should check radio radial delay and you should also check collapsing pulse by holding the pulse with your left hand and feeling the pulse at the metacarpophalangeal joint. Like this you can hold it. Collapsing pulse is generally a high volume pulse. When you feel it, then you will ask the patient that I am going to lift your arm. Do you have any pain? His arm up and then feel the pulse, which is initially high volume, will be reduced, and that is called collapsing pulse, which is a feature of aortic regurgitation. Meanwhile, you can check his respiratory rate, diverting his attention by putting a hand over the pulse and count the respiratory rate, see the movement abdominal thoracic or thoracoabdominal whatever it is, don't see the patient as the patient become anxious and the respiratory rate can be increased. Count for 30 seconds and you can multiply with 2. After that, you can take out the thermometer, see the temperature, and then check his blood pressure. I will demonstrate the blood pressure later on. Regarding the examination of pulse, you should mention as a normal pulse is 72 beats per minute, is regular in rhythm. Is normal volume, there is no special character, there is no radio radial delay, and one more thing always check for a radio femoral delay as well, which is seen in case of coaptation of aorta. Ask him to lie down, feel the radial pulse, and then corneal ligament area you can feel the femoral pulse and check for any radio femoral delay which is seen in case 
of the co-optation of Toyota. Now I repeat again because the examination of pulse is very important. Keep the patient semi-prone position. Feel with the left hand. Count the rate. Rhythm. Volume. Check for radio radial delay. Check for radio prevalent delay. Feel for collapsing pulse. And as I mentioned, respiratory rate, temperature, and blood pressure. Regarding the normal pulse, it is 72 beats per minute, it's regular rhythm, normal in volume, there is no radio radial or radio femoral delay, and it does not have any special character. Regarding Respiratory rate, as I mentioned, divert the patient attention by putting the hand over the wrist and feel the pulse and look at the abdominal, abdominal respiratory pattern and then multiply with two or four, depending, you know, after the kidney, there is a period of 15 seconds, 30 seconds, you know. Or regarding temperature, Remember the temperature normally is 98.6 for high. Temperature, the best place is the, and reliable place is the oral cavity. But we usually use the axilla in view of a sanitization point of view. Do axillary temperature as that is a lower than the oral temperature 1 centigrade. So if you have axillary temperature check here, as you have 1 centigrade, you have to add on. Temperature के बारे में temperature continuous पे होता है continuous mean के जो fluctuation है is not more than one centigrade so that is continuous if the fluctuation is more than one centigrade or usually up to two centigrade that is called remittent so most of the fever they are remittent Continuous fever is seen in case of enteric fever and most of the fever like viral infection, bacterial infection, they are remitted. The third is intermittent. Intermittent, it touches the baseline and in a day you usually have got a fever which remains for several hours. So intermittent fever is further divided into if it comes daily and touches the baseline and remains for a few hours, that is called quotidian fever. Q U O T I A D I N, quotidian fever. If the fever comes on alternate days, then it is called tertian. And if fever comes on every third day, it is called quartern. So intermittent fever will touch the baseline which, come, which comes daily and remains for 4 hours. If it comes every day, it is called quotidian. If it comes on alternate days, it is called tertian. And if it comes on every third day, it is called quartan. So fever is usually checked when patient is off paracetamol and then as I told, the blood pressure, I will demonstrate it later on and tell you what is the significance of blood pressure while we are doing the CPS examination. After examination, the vital signs is important to examine the hands. As a general physical, in hands, the important things are finger clubbing, quadrolechia and leukolechia. Finger clubbing is very important physical sign. The finger clubbing is a loss of an angle between the nail and its nail bed. That is the first official sign of finger clubbing. And then there are rates of clubbing. If there is fluctuation, that is grade 2. If it 
is drumstick appearance, that is grade 3. And then if it is hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy, it is grade 4. How you demonstrate finger clubbing? Finger clubbing ke liye, you place the card like this and sit down and see there is an angle between the nail and its tail bed. So you can see through it. And check in the both hands. Like it. Never place a card like that. Always place a card like this. And you can see the angle between the nail and its nail bed. Another method to ask the patient to make a shape like this by placing the two nails together. And then you can see through these two nails that there is a gap and there is a triangular gap. So there are two matches to check for clubbing. And the best method is to place the card and see the angle between nail and its nail bed. And always check bilaterally. Clubbing is a very important physical sign and generally you must know the causes of clubbing. In respiratory, there is a tuberculosis, bronchogenic carcinoma, lung emphyema, bronchiectasis. They are the common causes in heart, infective endocarditis, failures of tetralogy, atrial myxoma, in GIT tract, inflammatory bowel disease, such as Crohn's disease, liver cirrhosis, and mouth absorptive disorders like celiac disease and dimples. So these are, these, there are a lot of other causes as well, but these are the common causes, respiratory, GIT, as well as cardiac. Then the other thing which we would like to see in the nail is the coilonychia. Coilonychia, the nail is become brittle, rough and it is concave. There is some concavity in the nail bed and in the nail itself. And you can place a drop of water even then if you remain there. So that is called coilonychia. Coilonychia is a feature of iron deficiency anemia. Then you see in the nail white nails, which is called leukonychia. And the leukonychia is a feature of hypoalbuminemia. So after examining the vital signs, examine the hands for clubbing, for coilonychia, for leukonychia. And as I mentioned, the clubbing is very important. You should know the causes of clubbing, how to check the clubbing, and then the other important thing, how to grade the clubbing. The first grade is the loss of angle between the nail and nail bed. And second, there is an increased diameter transversely as well as anteriorly. And that results into a fluctuation. Then it becomes to a drumstick appearance. And then in last, it becomes a hypertrophy. Along with the nail changes, there is a hypertrophy at the level of radius. So that is called grade 4 clubbing. Or clubbing ka tarika batona chahiye, kolonikia, likonikia. After hands, to ask the pain, to look at the eyes. And eyes ke andar, pallor, jaundice, that is important. Pallor ke liye, you will ask the patient to look up. Dono, aato se, to load lid hai, isko downward kare, upar dekhe. Or isko load it ko downward kare, you can see the lower part of the conjunctive eye. Or join us ke liye, you ask the patient, to look down, apne nichi taraf dekhe and look at the jointers, look at the sequela or jointers. Pallor is seen in the lower part of the conjunctiva, that is the best place and the under surface of the tongue. Pallor, which is called anemia generally, is usually 
differentiated on blood complete examination. If someone has got an anemia with high MCV, then you can think that patient has got vitamin B12 or folate deficiency. If someone has got a microcytic anemia, then patient could have an iron deficiency anemia. And then you should see the other signs of iron deficiency anemia, which is cholinemia, angular stomatitis. So there is some inflammation corner of the mouth and rositis, in which the tongue became inflamed and red. So anemia further differentiated on the CBC pay. Or CBC ke andar agar ke macrocytic hai, to vitamin B12 and folate deficiency. Agar ye microcytic hai, to then generally is an iron deficiency anemia. And then you have to see the other signs of anemia. Joint us to hai, you always look at the sclera. Because sclera has got a strong affinity with the brain ribbon. And that's why the sclera is seen. Because sclera has got a lot of elastic tissue. And elastin tissue has got a strong affinity with bilirubin. Look at the way I have told you. Look at the way I have told you. And the upper lips are open. And the joint is necessary that the patient's bright light should be done. The joint is the differential diagnosis comes with carotinemia. Carotinemia means there is an excessive carrot ingestion. In that the body will be yellow. Lekin sclera will remain spare. So carotinemia ke andar there won't be any involvement of sclera. Jaundice ke andar sclera will be involved. Carotinemia ke andar to other part of the body hai that will become yellow. Jaundice you should know. Iske causes, common causes may pre-hepatic jaundice, hepatic jaundice and post-hepatic jaundice. So pre-hepatic ke andar hemolytic anemia that is important. And then enzymatic deficiency like Gilbert syndrome is important. Or hepatic ke andar, lot of causes acute and chronic liver injury. Or post hepatic ke andar generally obstruction in CBD, stone, stricture, carcinoma. So causes of jointers should be, you should be well aware how to classify it. Remember whenever there is obstructive jointers, there will be other sign of obstruction like Joiners will be generally deep, there will be a pruritus and the nail will be shine and, and the other like the liver could be enlarged. If patient has got a pre-hepatic joiners like hemolytic anemia, then patient along with joiners will be anemic. And if patient has got a joiners due to the liver disease, then you have another stigmatus of chronic or acute liver disease. Jointers ke baad, aap oral cavity dekhe ke apna mask kuchhe ke rahe. Oral cavity ke liye, aap patient ko kahe, open the mouth, or you should have a tongue depressor, ask him, say aap, or see the oral cavity, the buckle will close up, the dental hygiene, and the, the condition of gingiva. Usually the oral cavity is seen. If there is an oral thrush, in cases of oral thrush you have got the whitish membrane. And then you can see under the surface of tongue, in oral cavity, upar kare, taalu pe lagai, zabaan, zabaan, taalu pe lagai, and see the under surface of the tongue. And that is important for pallor, for jointers, and for sinosis. So oral cavity is generally seen for pallor, for anemia, for jointers, for sinosis, oral thrush, mouth ulceration, and then there are a lot of other conditions, you know, like lichen planus in hepatitis C, you can see, but that is a little bit postgraduate stuff. And then after oral cavity, the other thing, you will move downward now to examine the neck. And in neck, you have to examine the lymph nodes. 
should examine the thyroid gland and the JVP. There are three things you should examine in the neck. That will be the lymph nodes, the thyroid enlargement and JVP. So I will demonstrate you how to examine the lymph nodes. This should be the position and then you should feel the pulp of your fingers. That is important. Particularly these three fingers. The first three fingers you should examine with the pulp and the movement should be little bit semicircular movement. It should not be like this. It should be a semicircular movement and then ask the patient do you have any tenderness or not. Feel the lymph nodes. Are they tender? Are they firm? Are they discreet? Are they matted? Because if lymph nodes they are matted, then you will say the patient has got tuberculosis. If the lymph nodes they are discreet, then the most likely patient has got a hematological disorder like Hodgkin lymphoma, lymphocytic leukemia, either acute or chronic infections like infectious mononucleosis, HIV. So, when you have lymph nodes, number one, they should be impressive. Less than one centimeter lymph nodes, they are not impressive. If the lymph nodes, they are impressive, they are enlarged, and they are, I mean, matted than the tuberculosis, and if they are not matted, then the most likely infections like HIV, infectious mononucleosis, and the hematological malignancy. There are a lot of other causes, but I'm just telling you the common causes which you usually can see in your general words. And how to demonstrate it? Submental, then submandibular, and then preauricular, then postauricular, then suboccipital. And after suboccipital, you will examine the cervical lymph nodes anteriorly as well as posteriorly. Anteriorly, the sternum is toyed hair, it's got your anterior head hair, yahan par aap feel karenge, and I will demonstrate you from the front that how will you move your finger, you will feel, and then don't palpate bilaterally in the cervical area because, I mean, you can press the carotids and then patient could have a symptom. Then feel and the movement should be semicircular and the pulp of your finger and particularly using the first three fingers and then anterior cervical and then the posterior triangle which is behind the posterior part of the sternomastoid feel for a posterior cervical lymph nodes, anterior cervical lymph nodes, ask the patient to shrug the shoulder and then you will feel supraclavicular lymph nodes. Thank you. 
स्टूडेंट से आप केपिटल प्लांट सेंट्रल प्लांट और इंटीरियर प्लांट जो पेक्टोरियल्स के पीछे है यहाँ पे आप फिंगर को एक बुक बनाए और पेक्टोरियल्स के पीछे इंटीरियर प्लांट और ये पोस्टीरियर प्लांट के लिए आप पोस्टीरियर फोल्ड ऑफ एक्सिला के अंदर आप फिंगर्स को हुक बना के इसके अंदर आप लिफ्ट में उसको फील करें और अगर आपने लेफ्ट एक्सिला के अंदर देखना है तो आप वहां पर उठाए और लेफ्ट एक्सिला के लिए यू यूज अ राइट हैंड तो एपेक्स पे लेके जाए हाथ को जहां पर स्पोर्ट करें नीचे की तरफ मूव करें आप पर डाउन कर और साथ साथ आप फील करते जाए एपिकल सेंट्रल मीडियल या इंटीरियर ग्रुप देख लें और पोस्टीरियर ग्रुप देख लें और यहाँ पर आप हुक बनाए इंटीरियर फोल्ड्स में और पोस्टीरियर फोल्ड डालने के लिए आप हुक बना के इस हुक के थ्रू जो हो आप देखें और फीलिंग वही है कि सेमी सर्कुलर या सर्कुलर जाना है पल्प से जाना है और सेकंड के वही ये लिफ्ट नोट जो है वो लार्ज है अगर है तो डिस्क्रीट है मैटेड है वट एवर इट इज हाईराइट प्लैंड के लिए आप सामने से भी देखते हैं सबसे पहले तो सामने से देखें कि थायराइड प्लैंड है या नहीं है पेशेंट को कहे ग्लास ऑफ वाटर होना चाहिए और पेशेंट को कहे कि पानी पिए और जब पेशेंट पानी पिए तो उसे यह ना कहे कि अभी अंदर लेके जाए पानी अभी मुंह के अंदर रोक के रखे अभी सॉलो ना करे तो आप पानी का घूट भरे मुंह में रखे अभी अभी आप घूट भरे जब घूट भरे तो देखें कि थायराइड स्वेलिंग है क्या ये मूव करती है डेप्यूटेशन के ऊपर या नहीं अगर थायराइड स्वेलिंग है तो इसको देखने के लिए भी आपको बैक से देखना चाहिए थायराइड का वो भी एग्जामिनेशन में आपको थायराइड का वैसे भी करा देता हूं ये उस तरफ कर बैठिए थायराइड के लिए दोनों हाथ जो है लाइक दिस फ्लैट रखे और दोनों थायराइड के लोग जो है वो आप फील करें विद दिस ये अपनी पूरी फिंगर्स की जो है इंटीरियर सर्विस इससे आप थायराइड लोग जो है वो दोनों पैर पेट करें कच्चे पैर पेट कोशिश करें ना करें बिकॉज ऑफ असिंग को पी आज का पेशेंट टू सोलो अब देखें कि कैन यू गो बिलो दी थायराइड स्वेलिंग इफ यू कॉन्ट गो बिलो दी थायराइड स्वेलिंग दैट पॉसिबिलिटी देयर इज अ रिट्रोस्टर्नल एक्सटेंशन अगर रिट्रोस्टर्नल एक्सटेंशन है तो उसके लिए आप पेशेंट को कहें कि जी बाजू पर उठाए बाजू पर उठाने से प्रेसिक कैविटी इनर जो है वो कम हो जाएगी जिससे पेशेंट को डिस्ट्रेस होगा जिस इज कॉल्ड साइन ये उस वक्त है व्हेन देयर इज अ रिट्रोस्टर्नल एक्सटेंशन तो थायराइड की स्वेलिंग को भी देखें कि टेंडर है नॉन टेंडर है इसके अंदर जो है वो डिफ्यूजली इन्वॉल्वमेंट है डिफ्यूज क्वार्टर है या आपका सॉलिटरी नॉड्यूल है या मल्टीपल नॉड्यूल है और फिर उसके बाद उसका फर्दर डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस है जो इसमें टिप मैं बता रहा हूं वो ये है कि आपने पानी उसको जरूर देना है बिकॉज इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट कि इसको सॉलो कर सके उसे क्या पानी रोक के रखें जब वो पानी पीने लगे देन लुक एट दी नेक एंड लुक एट इज देर एनी स्वेलिंग इज इट मूविंग फ्रॉम डिप्यूटेशन और नॉट दूसरा अगर कोई थार एंड स्वेलिंग है यू आर्स द पेशेंट
अगर आप अब की क्लेरिकल 45 के एंगल के ऊपर कोई इंटरनल जुगलर वेन देखते हैं और उसके अंदर कोई पल्स है तो इट मींस अ जेवीपी इज रेज्ड तो जेवीपी जुगलर वेनस पल्स है एंड व्हेन एवर देयर आर नेक पल्सेशन यू हैव टू कंपेयर विद कैरोटिड पल्सेशन सो सपोज देयर आर सम पल्सेशन इन द नेक then how you can differentiate from the carotid pulsation remember the carotid pulsation if there are some pulsation in the neck feel those pulsation if they are palpable they are carotid if the pulsations they are not palpable they are venous that's number 1 number 2 there is a definite upper level in jvp agar koi blood right atria se vein mein aata hai तो कहीं ना कहीं जाके उसका एक अपर डेफिनेट लेवल बनेगा आर्टीरियल के अंदर ब्लड जो है वो आर्टरी के अंदर थ्रू एंड थ्रू पास कर रहा है लिहाजा उसके अंदर देर वोट बी एनी अपर लेवल दैट्स नंबर टू देर इज अ डेफिनेट अपर लेवल इन जेबीपी देर इज नो अपर लेवल इन कैरोटिड पल्सेशन एंड दैरोटिक पल्सेशन दे आर वेल टेबल Arterial pulsation, they are not pal. Arterial pulsation are palpable, and venous pulsation, they are not palpable. And then you perform hematojugular reflux. What you do in hematojugular reflux? You press in the right hypochondrium. Before pressing, you should ask the patient that Do you have any pain here in the right hypochondrium? If there is no pain, then you just press. and then see the jvp because by pressing you are increasing the venous return and the jvp is rising up and the carotid pulsation will remain unaffected there won't be any rise or a fall in carotid pulsation but when you press right hypochondrium the jvp which you are seeing in the right part of the neck that will rise up and then to place your hand like that above the clavicle and you compress if it is a venous pulsation then the pulsation will disappear the baby pattern will disappear and the pain will be prominent but arterial pulsation will remain unaffected and the last in arterial pulsation there is a up stroke and down stroke but in jvp as you know there are waves in jvp there are three positive wave in jvp a wave c wave d wave and there are two negative wave in jvp x wave and y wave so you have got a wavy pattern in jvp and you have got a up stroke and down stroke in arterial pulsation so now i am going to repeat again the differences between arterial pulsation and neck pulsation arterial pulsation in neck versus venous pulsation in the neck remain remember arterial pulsation they are palpable venous pulsation they are not palpable arterial pulsation has got a up stroke and down stroke venous pulsation has got a wavy pattern because there are a wave b wave x wave there is a definite upper level in venous pulsation and there is no definite upper level in arterial pulsation a petrojugular reflux will be present in venous pulsation arterial pulsation ke andar there is no petrojugular reflux aur petrojugular reflux kya hai when you to press here in the right hypochondrium the jvp will increase and then when you press at the root of the neck then venous pulsation will disappear but the vein will prop become prominent but arterial pulsation will remain unaffected the other point in jvp is which vein is reliable is it a external jugular vein or a internal jugular vein remember the internal jugular vein is more reliable than the external jugular vein as the internal jugular vein is directly communicated to the right atria external jugular vein is not rightly or directly communicated to the right atria it first joins with the internal jugular vein and then it drains into the right atria so internal jugular vein is in line with right atria and it is more reliable number 2 there are some valves in external jugular 
computer way and there is no gap in the internet computer way so whatever the changes going in right area they are best reflected in internet jugular vein because there are no gaps and number 3 the internet jugular vein is deeply placed it is placed between the two heads of sternomastoid and you cannot generally see it you know until it is distended however the external jugular vein is superficial vein and is passing across the internal jugular vein and it can be seen superficially and that is sometimes constricted when you ask the patient to turn the neck to the right to the left so platysma become constricted and the, when the platysma become constricted the vein which is facing in between the platysma will become also tight and resulting into the disturbance of the wave pattern so internal jugular is more reliable because it is directly connected to the right atria there are no valves in the internal jugular vein and it is deeply placed as compared to the external jugular vein then suppose the jvp you can see some wavy pattern above the clavicle and you are sure it is not palpable and there is some definite upper level you have to form a pattern jugular reflex and you know that it is a jvp then you should measure the pressure in jvp Where the lumen is not being produced, 
एंड सम टाइम मॉल ऑब्जेक्टिव डिजीजेस जहां पे जीआरटी से प्रोटीन का लॉस होगा तो दैट विल रिजल्ट इनटू अ बायोलैटरल पिटिंग एडिमा और नॉन पिटिंग एडिमा जो है वो जनरली सीन इन लिम्फेटिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन इन प्री टिबियल पिक्स एडिमा एंड एंड इन केस ऑफ अ क्रॉनिक वीनस एडिमा व्हिच रिजल्टिंग इनटू अ इंडुरेशन ऑफ द स्किन तो एडिमा देखे एडिमा का मतलब बता रहा हूं अबाउट द मीडियल वैल्यूज Two to three centimeter above the mealy malleolus, and use the thumb and place it for some time, at least ten to fifteen seconds, and then see for any pitting, and then feel the pitting as well. Before you say this is a very important physical sign. Similarly, there is a another edema, the sacral edema. Sacral edema is there in the sacrum, and place your thumb for some time, and then feel. Is there any pitting here or not? That is sacral edema, and that the causes are almost the same. Especially people who are lying down, you know, most of the time they usually get sacral edema. So this is clearly about the general physical examination. Now we are going to proceed the cardiovascular system. <coughs> Remember the cardiovascular system. <coughs> 